Media definitely does a good job at portraying minorities in the most negative light. You saw it with Katrina, with the looting. There were plenty of white people that were looting. There were plenty of black people that weren't, but they didn't show you that. As a Muslim, I see it where all of the focus is on extremists, where if they panned out at any rally of, of extremists holding signs to death to the West or et cetera, you would see that there's half a dozen people and that the rest of the onlookers are looking at them with shame, shaking their heads. But media is just gets off by sensationalizing things. It's about ratings, you know? Media is no different than Hollywood. It's just about ratings and trying to get people to pay attention to shock value. But shock value has proven to work in so many aspects, whether it be to uh, objectify us or to, to market us. We use shock value within our own music to sell records, and then media uses shock value to portray us in a negative light. What does it end? What does it stop? You know, what does it begin? I, I don't know. The population incarcerated right now is a direct result of our system. Our system is designed for X amount of people to fail. It always has been and it always will be. This is a system that needs people to fail in order to ensure its survival for several reasons. If everybody made it, then what is the value of making it? What is the value of having a degree if everyone can have a degree? What is the value of a high-ranking job if everyone is eligible for that high-ranking job? So this is a system that's designed to make us fail. And that's the sad part about it. I, I thought about that all the time when I was a child. I, I have a learning style that I only learn when people show me things by hand. If you explain it to me and then allow me to do it myself, I learn. But if you tell it to me in a book and dictation and expect me to remember it, I come across as a failure, which is something I struggled with in school. But when I realized that and I abandoned that way of thinking and went towards the arts, suddenly I excelled. But had I gone with that system the way it wanted me to, I would have failed. And I, it's designed for me to fail. It's designed for the people who can take uh, orders to prevail. Those people who are really good at taking orders excel within, within our system. The people who aren't good at taking orders are designed to fail. The system discards them. So naturally, people growing up in rougher neighborhoods and in the cities, in rural areas, which are oftentimes just as bad as in the cities, they're, they're caught in a system that's designed to make them fail. I, I think it's no coincidence at all. In fact, I don't even necessarily think it's something that's trying to keep blacks and browns down. It just so happens that blacks and browns are within the lines of failure because the majority of this country is still white, whether we want to admit that or not. And many of those white people are very, very poor from Massachusetts to West Virginia, et cetera. This is a system that's discarded its own people or the very system that made it. And there's plenty of poor white people as well. It's just a system designed to make X amount of people fail. It just so happens that it's easier for us to fail in this system. Karl Marx said that the destruction of America will be the depletion of its middle class. I was reading in Time Magazine though, a few years ago where they said more and more African Americans are graduating out of university and more and more white Americans are dropping out of high school. So you start to see this stark gap between rich and poor and the haves and have nots. Like most things in first world countries, things will witness a bubble and it'll just burst. Whether it be housing or our economy or education and the value of an education at a bachelor's degree versus a master's, things reach a point where they, bu they bust. Within our lifetime, a bachelor's degree meant something. Now it means nothing. Now you have to have a master's, and eventually a master's won't mean anything, you have to have a doctorate. Then it'll bust, and then things start over again. It's really rough for those people when that cycle starts over again, or when it's near that, that, but, that bursting point. But nevertheless, it always resets itself. He kind of stood still, you know what I mean? And I, I was getting ready to pop in the next beat, he was like, nah. And then something was going, and something was clicking for him. There was a track that I think that maybe Nas had gotten from No ID or something that actually Kanye had done. So he's like, actually, I'm on this album of yours. I did this track actually as a, as a ghost producer. We realized, yo, we could actually work together because if I do something, he'll know why I did that. 
he won't question it. Like, oh, are you sure? Back then, people didn't know how to make this shit. Like, they didn't know how to make this music. I had to really fight to learn how to do it through like four tracks or like two tape decks and one turntable. Like, and actually figure it out. You couldn't go online and figure it out. 